jump back in where we were last week. Father, we receive your word today. We open up our hearts. Father, we allow, Father, you to speak to us. Father, let us know who we are and who you are in us. In Jesus' name, amen. I, uh, I had a pastor one time, and um, it was years, years and years ago. And we are in Southern Illinois. How many of you know we're in Southern Illinois? If you don't know you're in Southern Illinois, I I don't know what to tell you because uh, it's a different culture here. And uh, just like every area, it's a different culture. And um, he came in, and, and I guess he developed in me probably my biggest fear is pastoring and ministering in Southern Illinois. And it's my biggest fear. Um, he, um, because it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a thought of failure. He came, and um, he... Uh, Stepped into our church, who was heavily Southern Gospel. I sang Southern Gospel. And, and I love it. I still love it. I still love singing. We sang a cappella last week, Sandy Patty. Didn't you love that? Yeah. He's more than wonderful. Man. He is more than wonderful. Amen. This young man came in and he was trying to get the praise and worship in. That was his goal. That was his time of worship, praise and worship him. And it seemed that the, that the church just fought him. And um, three or four years, five years after he left, one of the main talents that we had while we fought him the most left the church, went to another church, and guess what they did there? Praise and worship. Five years down the road, I ran into her at a restaurant. She says, wow, if we would only understood where he was trying to take us. You know? God casts a vision in someone. And that's their life. God, I didn't understand it until a, a man stood in front of me one time and just prophesied. He, he spoke to me the vision I had seen two years prior, Connie, and I had never told anyone. Pat didn't. I told no one. It was too big for me to wrap my head around. And when I stood out on this property up here at the top and looked down, because Rick was telling me, Dean, Rick was ready to believe with me. Rick was ready to stand with me and let's take it to, get, get a team together and let's, but, but Dean, is this really the place? Are you sure this is it? So I went out and walked on it, you know, and walked around it. And when I got up there at the top of the hill, I saw it. It's just what I saw, man, 25 years ago. Lois, it hadn't been about 25 years ago. A long time ago, you know. And so then we could stand, amen. And so... God begins to cast that in you and you wait and you stand and you, and you pray and you prep because what else can you do? You know? And then when you get to the place where you're heading in that direction and you're standing on it, your question is, will they get it? Will they get it? Amen? Can they grasp what the validity of what God's wanting to do. Amen? So, God's never a God of doing little things. All the little things are going to add up to a big thing. God's a big God who does big things. And He does them through people like us. Just like you. Just like me. Amen? All we have to do is believe. And what we have to do is stay consistent in the direction that He's wanting us to go. Amen? So, before we get started, I want to talk to you about uh, a couple words that are used in the Old Testament. And when we see them used, we have to remember uh, what they're for. Amen? Because how many of you see, you see rod a lot. A stick, rod, in, in the Old Testament, don't you? And you see staff a lot. You know, Aaron's staff, Moses' rod, you know. 
When you see staff and rod, you have to understand what that is significant of. When you go get the significance of that, then you, every time you see it, you, it's just like every time I see love, I see God. Every time I see God, I see love. Every time I see Jesus, I see the Word. Every time I see the Word, I see Jesus. Because revelation knowledge has come to me to be able to translate that immediately while I'm reading. So whenever I'm reading, rod and staff always mean something to me. Because what he's actually trying to tell us is, that is, see, you, you saw in the Old Testament when curses were coming and their staff was broken. Well, that wasn't a leaning stick he was talking about. It was more significant than a leaning stick to get through the, through the, through the area because they walked everywhere or they donkeyed everywhere or camelled everywhere. So, so you know, um, so it was more than just a staff and rod was something to do with their provision and their supply. So when they said their staff was broken, that means their supply was broken. Their bread was cut off. Okay? When you see, every time you see, you see the mighty hand of God. Right? So when you start talking about uh, stretching out your hand, God said everything that you stretch your hand. He's talking to you. Okay? So say with me, every time I stretch my hand out, to touch anything, God stretches his hand out to touch that which I'm stretching out to touch. You see? He uses the significance to let you know that he's living inside of you, and then the things, the shadows and types that you see in the word, when he gives you something, he gives you a substance or he gives you a provision, and then he gives you his mighty right hand, and he tells you, just like he told Moses, stretch out the hand and stretch out what I put and provided for you. You stretch it out over the impossibility and watch the impossible take place now. That's power. The question is, how long did Moses stand there? We don't know. He stepped out of that sea. How many of you ever been in the ocean? Got out there and need to eat, waist deep? That's about as far as I want to go. There's stuff out there that eat me. I, I, anything, I, I eat stuff. I don't want anything eating me. Okay? So I, you know, but you can feel that swirling around your ankles. Maybe it's seaweed. I'm going to believe that it's seaweed. And so I, st when I, I remember the first time I got out of the ocean. I stood there, and the first thought in my mind, first thought in my mind was, how long did he stand there? Feeling that swirl around his ankles, his calves. He was up against something. And what he was up against, did you know God strategically positioned him for that? And many would call it failure. Many would call it, you missed him. Okay? So now, there's the opening. All right? Go with me now. We're going to reiterate some stuff from last week. Go with me to John um, chapter 6, 63. Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. Spirit, life. Spirit, you cannot get spirit in the natural. Deep calls to deep. It's, you've, got to, you've got to sense you, your spirit man, you've got to tap into your spirit man to understand spiritual things. Because, and, and you've, got to, you've got to transform your mind into thinking in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the area of spiritual. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the God kind of faith. So there's all kinds of faith, but the God kind of faith only comes by transforming our mind or getting to thinking like God speaks what he has to say about something. 
not what everybody else has to say, or not what we see, or not what we experience, but what God says. Now that takes training, because you have been trained all your life by your five senses and your motor skills and all the, all the experiences that you've had to think a certain way and to conclude a certain way. And God says you've got to transform your mind to the way I think so that when you can, when you experience when I speak, you can stand on what I speak and not let anything else affect you. Okay? Watch what he said. He says, he says over in John 20, 20, he says, and when they had so said, he showed them, showed them to them his hand and his side. And were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord? Now, he had just showed up after the, after the resurrection. Then Jesus said to them, again, peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me. Even so send I you. Remember, no one killed him. He laid his life down. When they came to get him and they said, are you Jesus of Nazareth? He said, I am he. And when he said, I am he, he laid the whole army out that night. Knocked them right out just by speaking, I'm he. Nothing else. Didn't rape, he didn't, he didn't do a Benny Hinn. Come on. He didn't do all the theatrics and all that. He didn't need theatrics. Let me tell you, when you tap into the power of God, you don't need theatrics anymore. You just need a word. And he had a word. He said, I'm he. And when he said, I'm he, his, his word went out. And it just, because the Bible says, before him, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. All of a sudden, they were laid out. Why? Because I am he. Whew. Whew. Let me tell you, when you've got an I am he back in you, you can do all things through that. Amen? All right. Watch what he says here. He said, even as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. How he sends you? The same way the Father sent him. How did he show up spiritually? How did he get conceived? A word was spoken. And from that word, the Spirit moved on that word and a baby was conceived in the womb of Mary. A word was spoken, the spirit came with it, and it settled in your heart, and a spirit was born. A spirit man came to life. It came through a word. The Bible tells us, what's the Roman road? How can we hear unless there's what? A preacher. A word coming out, and that's not talking about your, we're talking about someone who's carrying a word from the Lord. That's a preacher. And that does not fall in every, that, that every preacher does not fall in that category. Okay? So we're looking for some, somebody who can produce a word that is, a, that is a spirit and life word that the spirit can carry and attach to to bring something to fruition. He will not bring, he will not attach himself to just every word and any word. Hello. He will only attach himself to the God word. Amen. Amen. All right. So that's where you got to find a place like that. Then you finally discover that that is possible. And then before you know it, that's how you're operating at work. <laughs> that's how you're operating at home. That's how you're operating on your business. That's how you're operating with your children. That's how you're operating about your health. That's how you're operating about your finances. That's how you're operating now. Because you found somewhere where that's possible and it is alive, and now you found out that it's alive, now it starts working in you. 
Because this thing is not about the preacher. It's about producing disciples. But first you've got to find a preacher. To get God, you got to find you got to find prophetic unction to get prophetic disciples. The, the prophetic unction in disciples. You get flesh, you're going to get flesh. You work in spirit, you're going to get spirit. You see, that's why not every church is the right church because if it's not producing spiritual, it's producing flesh. It might be a great church. They might have the best coffee in town. Praise God for that. Let's go by and get a coffee and then let's go somewhere where they got the word. Come on. Amen. See, this thing was built on a word. It wasn't built. Here's what happens a lot of times. We get we get praise and worship leaders, and they they, you know, people come to hear the music. They come to feel the spirit. They come for that. And then all of a sudden they get to feeling like they're the they're the tail that wags the dog. And I got news for you. The only tail, there is no tail that wags the dog. God established everything on his word. And that's where we got to stand on everything. Amen? Hallelujah. Watch, these, watch what he goes on to say. He says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted and who, and unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now go with me to Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So when he spoke that, he spoke a thing, and then what's getting ready to happen? The Spirit of God is getting ready to attach itself to those words. And something's getting ready to come to fruition. But there is a position the people had to get themselves in to be a part of that. The Spirit, when it came, when, the, when He came and filled people, He filled them in a specific place. A place, now understand. He told them to go to that, go to Jerusalem and tarry till I get there, till, they, till he gets there. There was a position for them to get to, a position. God's always got a position. You also see the word place everywhere. How many of you notice in the Bible, when you read the Bible, you see place everywhere? Go to this place, and there's a place here, a place there. It's always place. Do you know what the word place is? It's the Greek word topos. That's the main name of our ministry. God told us to call it Topos. And they get really, either go to the bank and <laughs> say, okay, what's the name of your ministry? Topos Ministries. You're those weird people. You always have those weird names for your stuff. No, it's just God told us to name it Topos. Topos in the Greek is a strategic position of kingdom opportunity. Of kingdom opportunity. A strategic positioning of kingdom opportunity. Opportunity for the kingdom. See, they went to a specific place, and it was a, it was a position of, of unique position of opportunity for the... For, and so that 120 showed up, and what happened there? The Spirit of God came and filled them. Now, from that strategic position of opportunity birthed the church, and a few days later, 3,000 came to the Lord. And the church just started growing by leaps and bounds. Would that have ever happened if they didn't go to the strategic position? No. They had to get to the strategic position. Okay? All right? Now, that's the new, that was in the New Testament. But understand, in that New Testament, that was the beginning and then the church, just without walls, started going crazy. I mean, it just blowing up everywhere. Amen? Now watch it. He says, now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. This is in Acts 2, two and 1 through 8. And in, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a much rushing mighty wind. Did you know that? There's a sound. There came a sound. 
uh, Doug Precept has an awesome message right there. There's a sound that needs to that needs to appear in our services. And watch this. And it filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire, like as of fire, like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, men who had influence. These were not just your, these are not the hillbillies of Judaism. This was, these were devout men. And these, these, these men of influence out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. A friend of mine was preaching in a, in, in, in a church and uh, uh, one of the family members had their grandmother there and I think she was from Italy and she spoke no English whatsoever and they, she spent a week, with, a week or two weeks with them from, from the motherland, and, and, and so they all spoke Italian, and they wanted her to come to their church, and they had a church that was on, on fire, was alive, and, and was full of the Spirit, and they, they didn't want you to come to our church, Grandma. And so they, they talked her into coming, but she couldn't understand anything that was being said. And while the preacher was preaching, he began to speak in tongues. And everybody else heard him speak in tongues before, and he sounded like he was just speaking in tongues like he normally speaks in tongues. But this time, he just started speaking in tongues, and he, did, he just didn't shut off. He just was just speaking in tongues, and, and nobody else was getting much, but, but you, know, you could feel the Spirit moving, so people were really, really feeling God's presence and, and experiencing that, and they were just being wrapped up in that. But all the while, this little lady back there in the back was hearing Italian fluently. After the service, she came up to him, and she says, she, she gave her heart to the Lord in service back there. She lifted up her hands and, and she just she just cried out to God and in her language and she, she received Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. And and in that she came to him and she says, Oh, you just spoke the most fluent. They were they were having to interpret with her. And and they said, Well, Grandma says you speak the most fluent Italian, but we didn't hear Italian. We know Italian. We speak grandma Italian all the time. We didn't ever hear you say Italian. We never heard one word out of you of Italian. This is the family. But she heard what he was saying in Italian. Now, I got news for you. If you don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit of, of speaking in other tongues for no other reason, if you say, well, that's just for another tongue. Well, now, now I got another one for you then. So there's another reason for you to be speaking in tongues. Because you never know when you might be speaking somebody's language and they need to hear Jesus Christ and they travel all the way from Italy to the, to the United States just so they could get the word. Why couldn't God do that over in Italy? God want a little more glory. Amen. Well, those words weren't of the thoughts and pretense of that pastor. He was just caught up in the spirit. Speaking in other tongues. Having himself a big time up there in the pulpit. Having no idea he was preaching the salvation message to a lady back there from the old country. Hallelujah. All right. This thing's a spiritual thing, folks. And we've got to walk in the spirit. We've got to live in the spirit. Which we goes on to say. It was noise abroad. Okay, that we've already, we've already. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans. They're going, there's no way. These people don't know our language. It would be impossible for them to speak our language. They're Galileans. And now hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Now let's go to Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. There are devils. There's a real devil. And, um, and, and they are already bound. And we just need to know how to take care of that. I'll tell you this. They shall speak with new tongues. 
They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, this is a spiritual thing. Amen? It is a spiritual thing. Hallelujah. Watch what he says. And, and, and the word is spirit and life. Now, those who I came out of the denomination that was not real good word centered. Oh, they were, they, now don't get me wrong, they didn't preach heresy. But living by that word and understanding it and living by it was not as focused as the gifts of the Spirit. And the assemblies of God were a little bit the same way. Lord, the Lord. There's a lot of stuff we didn't know before we knew the Spirit, Lord. When it showed up, He showed up, we knew. And we called Him in. Remember? Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, send your Spirit on down. And, and, and here we had the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Pentecostal circles had that. But we were, we were so ignorant that we called Him an it. Have you got it? Did you get it last night? You know, that kind of thing. Did you get it? Like you're something you're going to catch. And he's, an, he's not an it. He's a person. He's the very spirit of God. How would you like for me to call you it? Yeah, it told me. And you heard me say, if you heard me, if Kick White heard me say, yeah, it told me the other day, Marilyn, she'd go, what'd you just call me? An it? He's not an it. He's a he. He's the, he's the spirit of the living God. Amen? And Christ left this earth in the ascension and tag teamed the Holy Spirit and sent him so that now he would no longer be dwelling in or be upon. See, in Christ is the first time he indwelled. Everywhere else in the Bible, he was a pawn. When you are saved, he's a pawn you. When you're baptized, he's now filling, he fills you. And there's a big difference. It's a big difference. Jesus said the big difference is power. Amen? A power. So now watch this, what happens here. And the Lord spake to Moses. Go over here to uh, Exodus. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Parahiroth, between Migdog and the sea. Now that was uh, and, and over against Beelzebub. Before it, it, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Before it. You shall camp by the sea. Before the sea. In other words, here's what I want you to do. You go to this place. And on either side are going to be mountains. And right at the end of it is going to be the sea. And that's where I want you to go, and I want you to encamp. Moses says, okay. I mean, he's leading these, these, these millions of, of, of Hebrew children who have been in bondage for 400 years, and they've, they, 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 they've cried out to God, and God said, I'm going to send you an individual. And he raised up one individual, and he raised that one individual up, he, he raised him up for one specific motive, to, to free, set the captives free. That's all Moses is here to do, to set them free and get them to the promised land, get them to their position, amen? And Moses laid his life down. That's all that Moses ever did with his life was he went and got them set free, and then he took them to the edge of their promised land. The only reason they didn't get to the promised land and the only reason Moses didn't make it to the promised land is one thing. Those people were disobedient and couldn't believe God. And that was their disobedience. They couldn't believe God. And Moses didn't get to make it because he got all wrapped up in their drama and decided to take his provision that God gave him, the staff of his, of, of, and, he, and he, out of his anger, hit a rock. He got tied up with them. And when he got tied up with them, God said, now you can't make it. You can't go. What keeps us out of the promises of God? Unbelief and getting wrapped up with people with unbelief. 
and getting frustrated with them because they just won't believe. That will keep you out of what God's got promised for you. You cannot, matter of fact, and, and here's the tough part about this, pastoring today, watch this, he says, he said, now watch, now, now God told them where to go. I don't want to get off topic here. God told them where to go. And then he told them, you stay right there because I'm going to tell Pharaoh where you're at. What? You took us out of Egypt. We bankrupted. We got their wealth. But we don't have any weapons. They didn't leave with any weapons. They left with the wealth. And every, not one of them sick among them. All healthy. And the first round that we're going to take with this whole group is you're going to take us and you're going to wedge us between two mountains facing a sea. And then you're going to tell the enemy where we're at. When the enemy showed up on the horizon, what's the first thought that we have in carnality? Failure. We didn't hear God. We, we don't, oh no, we, we missed it somewhere. Listen to me, when God speaks, and you follow, and other people don't cooperate, other people don't do what you expected them to do, other people don't believe what you expected them to believe, other people didn't catch the vision like you expected them to catch the vision, you go do what God told you to do, and you leave everything else alone, even if failure has been told where you're at, and failure is coming towards you to defeat you. Because if God has sent you there, God has set you up, God is there to deliver you handsomely. Don't you, th don't you throw your provision down. Don't you throw aside what God's told you and what you know God has said. Don't you throw that stuff aside. You, and, and here's what's odd to me on the whole thing. These children of Israel, or these Hebrew children, went right back. Now, they're in their point of salvation. They're living salvation. They're free. They're, they're abundantly blessed. Everything's going right for them. And now they've come into one obstacle. And what do they do? They cry out saying, you brought us all the way up. There was not one. We, we didn't have, where we lived in Egypt, there were no tombs. There were no gravestones. So what you did was you led us all the way out here in the desert so that we could create a graveyard. That's what they said to Moses. That's what, you brought us right out here so we could fail. You brought us right out here. We could still be having a cot and three squares every day. And look at what you've done. And Moses turned around and encouraged them and encouraged them and encouraged them. Okay? Spoke encouragement to them. All right? And you know what God said to Moses? He said, hey, Moses, why are you complaining to me? Why is Moses getting cheated up? Moses was encouraging them. But Moses is the one getting blamed for all the complaining. Do you know why? Moses was the only one with the Holy Spirit on him. He's the only one with the power. He's the only one with the... And, and he says, you, you just turn around and you... See, instead of listening to those people, what they had to say, he should have had his head turned towards God. And say, what do I do next? We're here. You, I, I know you brought me here. I know we're here for a reason. I don't know what in the world that reason is right now. But I know we're here. I'm facing this sea and I'm looking at this army. And I'm, I'm snugged in between two mountains. Now what am I going to do next? But instead he was listening to them complain. And trying to encourage them. And had his focus on that. And that's why God corrected him. By allowing the complaints into his life. God God made him responsible for the complaints. Hmm. 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 So he finally got straightened out and said, what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to go out there in front of that sea. And I want you to lift up your hand and lift up that staff. And you watch 
the arm of the Lord. You watch the delivering power of God. You watch my delivering power. Now, we have the rest of the story. But now here goes Moses. See, Moses had now had an experience with his staff in his hand. He put that staff up in his hand before him, and water turned to blood. Cattle were wiped out. Firstborn were dead. Time after time, snakes were swallowed. His staff turned into a snake, swallowed up the other snakes, and then turned back into a staff. And said, now, can you... You know? Amen? Amen? So God had given him an experience. So when God said, stretch that staff out and stretch your hand out, God knew, Abraham, Moses knew exactly what he was talking about, and it gave him the tenacity to do what nobody else could do that day. God has a plan for you, and he, in that plan, he's got something for you to do so that you can see the mighty hand of God do, and you're going to do what nobody else can do because it's you. Nobody else can face your situation like you can face your situation. And God has a word on your situation. And you already have the equipment in hand to get it accomplished. Moses didn't do this for his salvation. Moses didn't do this for his, 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 his uh, eternal uh, 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 place in heaven. I'm not talking about works so that you stay in, in God's graces. You are already in God's graces. You're already under his mercy. You're already in his love. You are his child. But now it's time to operate in the spirit. You're trying to do things and you're trying to, to, to stand up against your situation and you're trying to do it in your flesh and what you can do. And you're listening to the complaints and you're listening to the, the challenges and you're listening to all of that. And you've got to shut that noise off. Because everything you allow into your ears, you're allowing into the, into the, into the presence of God. Moses was allowing that stuff into his ears and God said, what are you complaining for? I'm not complaining. You are complaining because you've got in the presence of a complaint and now I'm having to listen to it. <coughs> Do you see? And so Moses, it seems like knowing the rest of the story is so easy. But he had like six million people behind him and they just complained to him and he decided to turn his back on them, talk to God. God speaks to him and nobody else hears it. And then they watch him walk away from them, start walking out there toward that sea and he's got his staff in his hand and he walks out into that sea and starts putting his hand out. And look and just imagine what that six million people want to do. They want to follow him and drown him. You put us in this position. We followed you. And it didn't turn out like we thought it would. Mm. And then. And then. And then. Can you imagine what the sound of that was like standing there and all of a sudden the waves begin to part and it began to roll back and as it began to roll back the wind began to blow and the shore the, 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 the sea bottom began dry and then Moses starts walking out there in the middle of it turns around and says come on we're going to the other side. How could he see to even, not even just step out there and stretch out his hand, but how could he see to step out there on that dry sand and to walk through a wall of ocean? You have the Spirit of God is upon you. See, the Spirit of God is not a 
spirit of god you now live in an age you now live in a dispensation where the spirit of god has the ability to live on the inside of you not just upon you look at what you can do with it upon you well what can you do with it filling you with him in filling you folks Whatever you stretch your head out to do, he stretches his out to do. Whatever you take hold of, he takes hold of. Whatever you take your provision, your supply, your, 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 whatever you stretch it out over, he stretches it out over. Mm. Folks, I love living by faith. I got news for you. We can do fundraiser. I don't care. But I've lived by faith for so long. I, my faith is not in fundraiser. My faith is not in what we can accomplish. My faith is in him. I shouldn't be in this building. I shouldn't even still be in ministry. I shouldn't have been in the last, the last building. Should have never done what it did, and we should have never. I had people. I had to preach to people for years, going, "I don't even know why we're in this building." I said, "I don't know, but I know this. God said it has something to do with the next building." How can you keep standing on that? Eighteen years standing on that. Eighteen years. The first few were pretty rough because nothing happened. Just because nothing's happening doesn't mean nothing's happening. Tens of thousands of dollars are coming. Hundreds and thousands of people are coming. I don't know who will stay and who will go. That's not my decision. It's not my business. It's not yours. Amen. Here's what I do know. I've had pastors say, wow, you know, there was that couple that came from your church? And I said, yeah. He says, well, they better bless him ours. Well, praise God. Let's raise up some more. Amen? I said, oh, yeah, you, 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 you pulled some slack out. They, they need to pull. I said, the slack's pulled out. They, they've come in. They've been great, great in our church. Wonderful. That doesn't bother me. Praise God. We've got to look in the spirit. Amen? Amen. You're a spiritual being. And God wants to do great things in your life, and he's going to do them by the Spirit of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, right now, we just thank you for your word today. We are more than conquerors through you. Father, while we stretch our hand out, you stretch your hand out. While we take hold of, you take hold of. Father, may we not live by bread and water alone, but Father, by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. May we get to know you. May we get to know your word. May we get to hear your voice. May we have the strength and the courage to hear your voice and act on your voice. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Here's what I've learned to do. When you hear from God, when you hear from God and God's giving you a direction, you might not hear anything for a long time, but you do what you know to do until you hear again. Amen. Because it doesn't come like you think it should or you, it's not coming like you, you, you had assumed or planned or, or what you envisioned, that doesn't mean you didn't hear God and you failed. Now's the time when you be still and know that he is God. So many pastors, so many churches give up just before God moves because they don't see. They don't see the, they don't see the results right quick. I'm not in the results ministry. I'm in the word ministry. I'm in the faith ministry. Amen? I'm in standing on his word ministry. Hallelujah. I might just be the plowman and the seed sower's coming behind. 
I might be the seed sower and the harvester's coming by. I don't care where I'm at. I just want to hear God, and I want to operate according to whatever he tells me to do. And if people think I'm crazy, you just think I'm crazy. I don't care what you think. It might hurt my feelings once in a while. It might make me feel lonely once in a while. I might feel alone once in a while. I might feel like a failure once in a while. But it doesn't change. See, I'm trying to tell you, when you're in those moments when you're feeling like a failure, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling depressed, when you feel like nobody believes in you, when you feel like they, 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 you, maybe you did miss God. He said, Son Timothy, you go, you go war, a, 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 a successful war, by the prophecies that went on before you. Because by then, you wore a good war. You have to go back and what did God say? Well, if that's what he said, that's the direction we're going to stay going until he gives another direction. And you don't listen to any man. Not on that. You be encouraged today. God, say it with me. God still believes in me. And he has a plan for my life. And I got a word on it. And I'm going to stand on it I'm going to stand on it till I hear from him. Amen. God bless you. Go in strength. Go in power. Go to the bathroom. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen.